Well, it's actually a, a new strategy. In, uh, in the past, uh, many attempts had been made to improve the uh, antipredator treatment itself. And then a time came about the, with the option of combining anti-predator treatment with the anti coagulant treatment. And the idea was to use low dose of both. For aspirin, this is a traditional use because I'm talking about a dose of 100 milligram per day. That's a usual dose. What is a little bit unusual is the dose of rivaroxaban. Then uh, in this particular trial, it was used at a dose of 2.5 milligram twice a day. So there are two elements of novelty. is the dose, 2.5 twice a day, and uh, the dose to be divided actually in, in, in two doses, because usually rivaroxaban is given and, uh, as a single day administration. And I think this was uh, a good idea. I reported the results of the COMPASS study that showed a benefit uh, of the dose of two milligram twice a day plus aspirin, and also showed some increase of bleeding. And uh, there was a discussion about the clinical benefit overall, that is, is still there. But of course, possibly the main uh, reason for discussion during my presentation was, and I believe is going to be, the type of patient that would benefit the most from such an association. Well, you know, uh, of course, as in uh, all these studies, uh, a composite outcome was used. So this means a cardiovascular death, a stroke, and MI. I was honestly impressed by the effect on stroke. The risk reduction was particularly high concerning this, uh, this endpoint. The population was then split in those that qualified for coronary disease and those for peripheral arterial disease, and the effect was extremely consistent. There was an effect on cardiovascular death that is so quite important. There was a discussion about the potential reason. Really, I would like to see whether you know, this uh, approach works uh, in uh, several other patient categories. There are some data in renal failure, but I also would like to see about in patients with extreme weight, uh, in a very old patient. I think we are actually at the beginning of a story. It's a new concept uh, associating low dose of aspirin with low dose of rivaroxaban. This is not the end of the story. This is certainly the beginning. I think it should be, this change should be considered quite carefully. I'm not sure whether it will actually do, but certainly it should be considered quite careful for several reasons. In, let's think about, let's make an example, peripheral arterial disease. For uh, several years, we have been working on increasing the so-called potency of the anti agents by increasing the dose or by uh, changing aspirin to something else, so-called to be more potent, but we actually failed. Either there was no effect at all, no benefit at all, or this was very minor. It's interesting that in the last couple of years, a change in strategy actually occurred. I would say two different directions. Direction number one, the cholesterol-lowering substances. This was not considered of a particular importance in patients with PAD. So everybody was aware about the use uh, of these substances in coronary artery disease, but not in PAD. And now there are data showing that lowering the cholesterol, PAD patient actually goes much better. And the second option is actually using the anticoagulants. I must admit that in the past, some attempts were made with the traditional anticoagulants, mainly warfarin. Uh, this study failed, either because warfarin is a little bit too rough and we had to use it in a specific dose. It's also cumbersome for its use, and the side effects are also very common. 
So I think the, the, the step forward we're using a different type of anticoagulant that in this particular case uh, was rivaroxaban. I think the idea of reducing the dose was quite smart in order to reduce the side effect. So we have a new concept, and this concept will be probably expanded in, uh, in the coming years. The data we have now are with rivaroxaban, so we don't know whether the same could happen with the other agent. This is part of the story. I don't even know whether the other companies will embark themselves in the studies in this direction. But overall, I think it's a, it's a quite remarkable step forward. I, and I believe that you know, people preparing the guidelines, they should think about this matter very carefully.